Hello everybody, this is Jason Fleischer. I'm your professor this quarter, and I just wanted to have a short introductory video so you all can find out a bit about me and my research and my personality, and maybe there's some things that uh, research-wise we can talk about more as the quarter goes on. So uh, without too much further ado, uh, let me just start the story where the story begins. I grew up in the middle of nowhere in a tiny little cow town in Colorado. The top left photo is basically my backyard. I could literally walk there when I was a kid. Um, and I spent my whole early young adulthood in Colorado. Got to move to the big city, 100,000 people in Fort Collins, Colorado for university, where I uh, majored in mechanical engineering. And yet here I am teaching you all about machine learning and data science stuff. So um, how did that happen? Well, along the way, I went through kind of a bunch of academic transformations, starting off as an engineer, getting interested in control systems and electronic controls, and then into computers and computer science and robotics, which is kind of the intersection of electronics and mechanics and from robotics into artificial intelligence and from artificial intelligence into understanding biological intelligence and from there just into working with huge biology data sets of genomic stuff and things like that. So long and twisty road. Moral of the story is less what I did and more that I had that kind of road. And if anybody wants to chat about career paths and how the plans don't always go the way they you imagine they will, I'm very happy to, to do that. Um, so let's see, along the way, uh, I spent some time in Manchester, England, which is an amazing place with lots of good music and lays claim to being the home of the computer itself. Uh, Alan Turing, the patron saint of computing, spent his uh, final years there. I did a short postdoc in Freiburg, Germany, um, and then I came here to San Diego. And uh, it was when I came here that I moved completely from the computing artificial intelligence world, which I had done in my PhD and my first postdoc, into trying to understand biology. So um, you've definitely seen it before where uh, neuroscientists and psychologists run rats through mazes to better understand just how the, uh, how the brain works. So all those many, many thousands of studies about the rodent brain. What we did is we, uh, back in 2005, built this robot, which was a robot with an artificial rat brain running the same kind of maze as the rat did. And we gave it the same kinds of inputs, and we gave it the architecture of the rat brain, what was then an enormous number of neurons, like, I don't know, like 150, 250,000 neurons, and 10 million-ish connections which was huge at the time when we had these giant computers doing it. And nowadays you can run that in your phone. Uh, but, you know, the moral of the story is that we were able to use this artificial rat as a way to study things going on in the real rat's brain. And along the way, we also, uh, we also used what we'd learned about uh, these simulated artificial nervous systems to control real robots and make them do better robot things. Uh, these kinds of simulated nervous systems were particularly good at giving robust adaptive behavior in real time, uh, which is something that in the 2005, 2007 era was rather hard for AI algorithms to do. More recently, I've stepped from this kind of uh, neuroscience modeling into just working, using, using my skills as a methods person with lots of understanding of machine learning and statistics, and using that as a, a data scientist with uh, understanding what goes on in biological data in uh, more, that's more directly related to hardcore biology rather than just how signals go around the brain. Um, so something that's maybe of interest to uh, the students around here is work I've done with people who are into circadian rhythm studies, understanding how the timing of what you do changes your health status. So uh, students in Seattle who are high school students got a late start year 
after many years of uh, the usual kind of uh, got to be in school at 730. So they, they got an hour late start and uh, my colleagues were able to study these students and show that uh, they were getting a little bit more sleep and a lot better results in their, uh, in their academic performance. So uh, similarly, when you eat as much as what you eat can also affect your health status. And I've been involved with people doing clinical trials showing that for obese and metabolic syndrome patients, which is kind of like a, a almost diabetes, um, that uh, time-restricted eating can have big benefits. So this is just kind of using machine learning and statistics to try to find patterns in the data. Um, another element of what I've been doing is uh, transcriptomics, looking at how genes change, right? Genes turn on and off all the time in response to things that are going on in your body. And uh, the way they turn on and off changes as we age. And uh, sh you know we all would love it if we could understand maybe a little bit more about what makes a a uh, very young feeling and acting 60 year old so healthy and why some 30 year olds have health problems that look a lot more like somebody who's much, much older. Um, so sh long story short, it turns out using some ensemble machine learning techniques, we can use uh, transcriptomic data, gene expression data to predict how old somebody is. And maybe that gives us a lever to understand better how aging itself works at a molecular level. Um, beyond research, uh, I am a family guy, and on the left you can see my eldest son, who's pretty much your age, and uh, on the right you can see my five-year-old, and uh, also my cute cat and cute wife. So sometimes I won't be as fast uh, as you might hope in responding to student questions. The pandemic has us all, you know, uh, locked up with our families, so so I apologize in advance if uh, things don't go as well as we would like this quarter in part because life exists and I will be extending y'all the same courtesy and giving you a lot of uh, leeway because I know that you're experiencing similar kinds of issues. Finally, I just wanted to close with another personal thing. Um, I am a huge fan of soccer and I play it and uh, I just wanted to take this opportunity to plug the local San Diego team, the San Diego Loyal. Um, they are a professional soccer team in the U.S. second division in the USL, and uh, they are really fun to watch. Uh, I highly suggest that if you enjoy soccer that maybe you get out to a game next season. The current season actually just ended. Uh, of note, maybe if you care about soccer at all, their manager is basically a legend of the U.S. national team, Landon Donovan. So if you know American soccer at all, you know this guy, and that might be a reason to go out. Another reason to go out is that they are an incredibly fun team to watch. They don't play it safe, they go for it, and they are quite, quite fun, real. Um, uh, last reason to leave you with is that they are a team that cares about social justice and doing the right thing. Um, you know, Lots of people have uh, done things for the Black Lives Matter protests. They went out and changed their uniforms for it. But beyond that, they definitely put their money where their mouth is. In uh, two games this season, they have forfeited the game. Even when they were winning 3-1, they forfeited the game because of incidents of abuse on the pitch where opposing players uttered in one case a racist slur and in another case a homophobic slur and uh, the referees were unable to punish the opposing players and the opposing managers were unwilling in one case to remove his player from the field of play. Um, and so, you know, being a club of principles, they decided that they didn't want to, you know, let that kind of stuff slide and they wanted to send a message that this kind of abuse doesn't have to exist in sport. It does. I mean, there's a lot of things said on a professional field. Um, but it doesn't have to be this way, and we can be better. And uh, the San Diego Loyal, like I said, put their money where their mouth is and honestly believe in this and left behind their chances of the playoffs, you know, essentially to make a clear statement about what was right. So that's all I had for you. I've done my plug. I've talked about me and my research. I really look forward to chatting with you all more uh, as the quarter goes on. 
and I will catch you again on the next uh, lecture. Bye now.